Hello, and today we are detailing and trying to do a paint rectification on my dad's wonderful Hilux. Now this is what I would call his farm car. He loves to take it out. And as you can see, it has some pretty yellowing headlights, some worn flaking paint. Uh, just, just overall, just had a hard life. Um, we got some pretty decent uh, scratching in the panels and uh, we'll give it an overview, but you can see that it's just had a really hard life inside and out. Um, so we are going to be doing everything possible to be making this thing look like a beast again um, over the next couple of days. So we're gonna start off with some, obviously just some general washing and then get uh, into the multi-stage correction. Um, I'm also going to do a liner in the back uh, and I've got some new tools that you'll see as we go through. So a fair bit of work on this guy in the next a couple of days. Okay, so like on the R8, we're gonna start with a snow foam job. I'm probably gonna do two to three coats of that. Um, and then I'm gonna go into some, probably after some serious washing and scrubbing and pressure washing, we'll go into the clay bar and um, try to really use this to get out all of the metals. There's gonna be a ton of that. Finish off with some eraser. Uh, this guy will just strip anything back. And then, um, yeah, I'm gonna go into these three finishes here uh, with the machine. And um, in between, what I bought is one of these. So I was about to buy a blower, like a professional dual motor um, blower that we would have set up in the actual garage. But this guy ended up being um, only probably about half the price. Um, not only can I use it for other jobs, but um, it's cordless. So dual power, massive amount of output. As long as you've got the right batteries, uh, that'll be really handy just to save the amount of shamming that you end up doing when you do this. And of course, I'm gonna finish off uh, with a bit of the Evo from the Nova series. Really like it on the R8. Um, it's worked really well so far, so we'll finish off with that. All right, every good detail loves a little bit of water action, so I thought I'd just show the, uh, the lack of beating <laughs> that's happening on this car. There is just like zero, zero hydrophobic properties. Love that word. Such an awesome word. Makes you sound like you know what you're talking about. But essentially the water is just not running uh, off whatsoever apart from gravity. It's just sticking dramatically to the paint, which means we got a huge amount of work to do to try and build up that level of resistance again. This bumper has been resprayed, it's a slightly different color. Um, we're not gonna do paint rectification, as in we're not gonna get in and uh, sand and fill and bog, I've done that. It's not my skill. I'm just gonna stick to making it look as good as possible. It's an old car, so it'll take a fair bit of work. We'll get done what we can. Uh, I gotta show the inside of this. This is uh, needing some serious love. I mean, as I said, it's been the car that kind of goes out to the farm. But also, my wonderful dad has been taking our kids lots out to the farm, and so we need to do a lot of work on the inside. Try and make this guy look as fresh as new. This is what it should look like when you blow off the water. Oh, 
day number one down. And as you can see from behind me, I'm doing my typical tape up job. Um, for me, it's just a lot easier, but I do have a couple of new toys and this is one of them. I decided to go for the rupees this time. Uh, I will tell you tomorrow when I start to use this little guy. This is the Bigfoot Mini. Um, and uh, I'll see, I'll see how it compares. I mean, my other one that I've got is uh, similar in terms of power and whatnot, um, but as you can see, just the size difference, mainly the head. Uh, and uh, obviously this one is just a El Cheapo from the local store. I think it cost me 200 odd dollars or so. Uh, it's been pretty good so far, but immediately what I do notice with the rupees is the weight of the unit and obviously the metal gears inside feel a heck of a lot better. Better Should mean I should be able to get replacement brushes, although even with the cheap one, I got replacement brushes that came with it. The other thing I love about this one is, look at this, this is like probably about three or four, three to five meters maybe on the uh, cord there. They think ahead for that. So tomorrow we're gonna get further in and start the paint rectification. Um, we also, as you would have seen, did the full interior. So my wonderful wife has got in there and we have uh, cleaned the seats, made them all nice. And uh, it's been a great drying day, put them out on the driveway to dry out. So we got all that done, I'm gonna bolt them down tomorrow and we'll get into the paint rectification. Now that we have done the clay bar treatment, we've done the eraser. Um, and I didn't end up needing to do tar and sap removal. Um, it was surprisingly good. I got a full range of the Shoal uh, products, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna be able to use these guys to do a coarse, uh, fine and ultra fine finish. May not need that on this particular car as well, removals because it's pretty old school. Uh, but I'll definitely give those guys a shot um, tomorrow. Okay, so here is the paintwork condition before any uh, roughing or work on it actually takes place. One little swirl and obviously scratches. The worst part is definitely in around this back section here. Um, just purely the amount of scratches here from belt buckles and things like that, trying to get to the canopy part. So we're going to do as much as we can uh, with what we've got. We've sprayed some water on here. We get as many of these minor marks and scratches out. And obviously tons and tons of squirrel. All right, so I have spent a fair bit of time. Uh, this is the scratch point again. I did a, a light 2000 grit. I mean, I don't think you're ever gonna get rid of those. They're quite deep, but um, as you can see, I'll go back this way, show this angle. Um, the swirls have really started to come out of the paint. The deep scratches are always gonna be in there, but uh, for this uh, first couple of passes, and especially areas like this where the paint's actually decent, I'm not aiming to actually remove full-on dints and scratches. I mean, the reality of getting those out is through buffing is just impossible. You're never going to get them out. They're well into the base coat. So this is more about an overall appearance. So we've done this first back part, and uh, now we'll just continue through. And the key thing over here is definitely the swell marks. Okay, so I've just done the first lot of passes on the main door where I suppose you see a lot of panels, so if you don't have this nice and shiny, uh, it doesn't turn out very good. I gotta say, compared to Audi's paintwork, Toyota's paintwork, like, tough as nails. This is this has actually come up really good. Let me try and see the reflection and the lack of swirl marks, like, very quickly. Um, I haven't even gone over it with the medium and uh, intensity. I, I'm just really impressed. We <laughs> Originally said, yep, definitely not going to take any parts off, but I couldn't help it with the hood. 
we had quite a lot of clear coat that was uh, kind of coming off at this point here. So we've gone and got some matching uh, paint. Uh, this one is the same PSF93. Hmm. The wrong paint. Here it is. Here it is. Right, there we go. Toyota Silver DST70 is what I was meant to be showing you before. Glad I took this video. Anyway, so I've put a couple of coats on there that'll do great for undercoats. Uh, but obviously, yeah, we want to do the silver matching and then we've got some 2K clear coat to go on over the top of this guy. Okay, day number two done. And thanks to the help with Trevor, good friend of mine, we have been able to get all of the Hilux, or the Luxie as we say, actually finished in terms of two um, levels of paint rectification or polish. And then we have uh, put on the Nano protection um, that I've talked about a few times. And I've got to say, so it's a hybrid ceramic coating. I've got to say, I'm really surprised about the amount that I've got left. And I don't know, I'd love to know from other people. So you can see that it's like, can you even see? It's like halfway, halfway, full. Now that has done my R8 and the Luxie. And, and I mean, like there's a lot of panels on this car. So I've been quite surprised. I really love the level of um, gloss from the Shoal product. So these three levels of, of um, yeah, compounds are just, have just worked brilliantly. So just the shine uh, on these, the luster that it's been able to get. And I'll swing around and I'll do a few images of the panels. But in terms of uh, swirl and definitely um, scratch removal, um, I've been really, really happy. So we also did the headlights um, and uh, they've come up a treat. But gotta say, that new uh, multi-level product uh, compound, a one, two, and three step type setup is definitely something that I will continue to use. So if I compare these two, so we've got the show, we've got these three, and what I used on the R8 is I essentially used a polishing compound. I was not really happy, but I actually left um, these in another car and I couldn't get access to them when I was doing it. So I actually used this polishing compound. I believe it was this one. Uh, and a more coarse um, cutting compound. Maybe it was this one here. It, look, these compared to this range here, these Meguiar's products just do not compare to the level of gloss that I've been able to get out of these. I'm not sponsored. <laughs> I know by all three of my followers, it's very, very surprising that I'm not sponsored by now. I'm, I'm waiting for Shoal to contact, contact me about sponsorship. But uh, no, in all seriousness, uh, I've just been really impressed. Uh, great. Also love the new, um, the new machine. Um, it is a lot heavier, definitely. But I mean, you can use that weight to your advantage on the panels. Uh, it just helped get into the nooks and crannies, especially any areas like this, which is just tapered up. Um, and also trims like along here. The big machine was just far too big. You could open the door up, but it just wouldn't work very well. And when you came into spots like here, again, the big machine was just far too big. So the smaller one works really, really well for all these areas. Here I am back on day number three, and uh, I have this 
liner, which I am going to be fixing up and essentially coating, oops, essentially coating. So I have what's called a bully liner. Uh, this is a product just from a local, um, uh, I guess like super cheap auto, auto store. Um, and this is like a rubber, rubberized coating. You can see it's pretty, um, it's pretty thick. Um, and uh, it's kind of textured inside of it. I've uh, got to put a few coats down. I basically prepped this. I have, uh, of course, sanded it and got all the big lumps out. Um, this is fairly thick, so I'm not going to go and, and, and fill in the gaps. This is really, really scratched, and all the dogs jump up on this liner here. So I'm going to do this point, uh, obviously this tray, and uh, also the edge here, because he's already got rubber down just as kind of a protectant. See how that goes. The first coat's gonna be quite thin and just as a tack coat, and then it's going to be uh, layer after layer for those ones. So let's see how it turns out. Okie dokie, so I have done about four coats now, four coats of the Bully rubberized. Uh, I can definitely tell the best way would be to spray this I just couldn't be bothered for such a small area. Um, but when you roll, of course, the roller wants to kind of peel up um, much of the area that you've just put down. So it's probably about four coats. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but you can see these gray parts where it's kind of still clearish uh, or going through to the paint. It comes, it, it kind of comes out of the tin very gray. And then as it dries, it actually gets darker. So. Um, that's a grey background, and you can see, oh, maybe I put black up against it. Um, it's actually quite grey in terms of colour, and then as it dries it gets dark, which is pretty cool. So, um, I think it'll be fine for this area here, I'll do a time lapse of it all. Um, it's kind of just like a paint with sand, if I can put it like that. Obviously the sand is, is rubberized um, particles. As long as it goes black, I think it'll be fine. Any other colour than black, it's going to look a bit silly. So um, the more coats I'm hoping the, the better it gets and then I'll be able to cut the tape away. I'll probably cut the tape away because on things like this, uh, especially edges like this where you paint it over, if you're not careful with rubberized or flexible paints, you'll end up actually peeling the paint up if it hasn't adhered or, or in this case the coating. You can see it's quite thick uh, over here. So um, best off to cut that and trim that away. Um, but it's pretty cool kind of rubberized cement. It's a good little test area on this back and it was so scratched up Even if it was even if it's a, a really thick paint, it's gonna be better than what was there before So we'll see how that comes out. I have finished uh, the top coats on the bonnet scoop so um, It's come out reasonable the problem with any type of spray can is that you'll always end up with some eggshell um, or orange peel type uh, gloss level so you can see the light reflecting off it there. The only way for me to be able to really fix that up is once it's hardened, especially all the clear coat, is to sand that clear coat the top back, uh, a, a wet sand, and it's really soft, like because I don't have a bake, I don't have the proper spray, I've just used some clear coat that I was able to get from the auto store. So, if I wanted to fix that up perfectly, which I'm not real worried about. Um, I would need to clear coat, uh, just wet and dry that back, and then um, put some uh, put some uh, polish on there. So I'm just going to put the polish on there in the next couple of days, just to try and protect that well. Okay, so today's cleanup day. This has dried out overnight, and I'm pretty happy with it. As you can see, it's it's a much darker colour. Um, than it was going on. And all the scratches and everything covers in. Feels really quite firm. I'm gonna leave it at that and I'll peel off the tape. Just for this area on the back, I reckon it's used probably about up to here, uh, almost about halfway, a bit above halfway, about 500 mils just for the back, surprising. So to do the whole liner with quite a few coats, I reckon you need at least four liters, especially if you're spraying. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna suggest this. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll see if I can do a bit of a time-based thing, see how it goes. But even on that, there's a nice edge along there. Um, it was really scratched up, so really happy with that. 
the wheels came up fantastic in terms of how they look. Um, much cleaner and um, finished off. And Of course, I love putting up all my mistakes on this channel. I'm going to show you what I just did here. This is completely loose now, this one. Uh, I managed to over tighten it and it snapped the actual plastic. So, you're probably, uh, I'm probably going to have to plastic weld that. Yeah, you're going to see it straight through the scoop. So. A little bit of advice from here on my experience is uh, just be cautious when you're tightening any bonnet scoops back on. Probably a rookie mistake. Is in all her glory. Yes, the 2002 Toyota Hilux turbo diesel has been finished. The farm a truck as we call it. You can see the bonnet scoop is back on and that massive big chunk of flaky paint has gone. Obviously stone chips and things, like I said, to start with, couldn't get them out, but you can see the reflection in the side panels of the house there. It's really quite good. Really quite happy with all the way through here. Um, then, uh, of course, on the back. Hey, hey, what do you think? You like it? You like it? Tray liner. Yeah, I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good. You guys happy? You look scared. Kitchy, what's up? Oh, you don't want to get out. <laughs> it's all right. All right, so yeah, overall, I'm really happy with the way everything came up. Um, I think overall, all the panels, even this majorly scratched one that we talked about came up really quite well. Uh, for a car of its age and use, um, and anything from the wheels through to the panels, headlights, even how, uh, how they came up. It's really good. Tell me what you think in the comments. I'm pretty happy with what it is. And that is my experience. So, taking out the Hilux for a bit of a drive, and my word, it's just people looking at you everywhere. And I think it's, yep, there's another one. I think it's honestly, it's just because it's so shiny. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Luxy. No, it's an old one, definitely. People are just like gobsmacked, you know, it's just so glary. And it just, it just never stops. Never stops, never ceases to amaze me. It's quite, quite surprising.